Hey guys, today we'll be starting the next section of uh, chemistry, organic chemistry. And this video is about the introduction to organic chemistry. What is organic chemistry? What is the chemistry of compounds of carbon generally bonded with hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen and halogens? So you'll see a lot of carbons bonding with each other. Uh, you'll see them bonding to elements like oxygen, a lot of hydrogens, uh, chlorine, bromine, and iodine also. And in second year chemistry, you'll also get to find out about nitrogen compounds. Now, there's a few terms I'm going to be introducing you guys to in this video. Terms that we'll have to use interchangeably. Terms like homologous series, functional group, class of organic compounds, uh, empirical uh, structural formula, displayed formula, skeletal formula. And so, the idea of this class and this video and the next one is to get you guys comfortable with seeing, drawing, naming... Uh, large organic molecules and then playing around with the carbon atoms because once you do that then you can understand all organic chemistry you gotta treat this like lego honestly and these are all your pieces of lego and they can make different number of bonds like for example carbon can make four single bonds or in some molecules carbon makes a double bond and two single bonds in some it makes a triple bond and a single bond then an oxygen or actually hydrogen just makes a single bond but oxygen in some cases makes two single bonds and in one case makes a double bond uh, halogens obviously make single bonds because they're in group 17 and nitrogen that we'll see next year makes triple bonds or three single bonds yeah so as long as you understand the number of bonds these guys makes you can literally piece the molecules together or atoms together to make molecules uh, you can piece carbons and hydrogens together to make things like alkanes that you've seen in o levels you can also piece together carbons and hydrogens again to make alkenes also carbons and halogens to make what we call halogenoalkanes carbons and oxygens make different kind of compounds you got the aldehydes ketones and the guys that you did in o levels alcohols carboxylic acids and esters so it's a whole lot of that. So let's dive into the kind of classes of compounds we'll see and functional groups and their examples. Now, before we continue, I do have to mention the term functional group. Now, functional group is something that you'll see and it refers to the atom or group of, group of atoms that is responsible for certain properties of that class of compounds. Like in alcohols, you are going to see things like OH, you know. In alcohols, you would see the OH group. Now, if the OH group is bonded to a carbon atom, it has certain properties. And that's why this group of atoms is called a functional group. And it behaves like most alcohols do. If, on the other hand, you had at uh, the bottom of the slide, I'm making OH, This is another functional group because these group of atoms represents properties that a carboxylic acid would have. So the term functional group will come into play in the next, uh, when I scroll down. And that's what they are. Functional groups are just functional groups or just atoms, a group of atoms that have certain properties. So let's scroll down and see the most common ones that you've seen and done before. Now, the first set of class of compounds that you're going to encounter are alkanes and al halogenoalkanes. They're similar. The difference is alkanes may all the carbon-carbon bonds are single. And they have also bonds with hydrogens. This is the most simplest form of an organic compound can be where all the carbon-carbon bonds are single and carbon-hydrogen bonds are also single. And there's nothing else but hydrogen and carbon. We call these saturated hydrocarbons because they're all the carbon-carbon bonds are single. There is no functional group because this is what the everything else is compared to. This is like your base class of compounds. They don't have to be in a straight chain. We'll also look at some called cyclic later on but they have carbon-carbon bonds. All of them are carbon single bonds and the carbon-hydrogen bonds are also single. And that's what makes the class of compounds alkanes. Now, what makes something a halogenoalkane? Well, that means that there's a halogen in place. And by technical definition, a halogen has replaced one of the hydrogens in the alkane to become a halogenoalkane. So basically, if you notice this structure, the difference between this and this is it seems like the H here has been replaced by a chlorine. So this becomes a halogeno 
alkane or more specifically a chloro alkane a certain alkane because all the carbon carbon bonds are single but now it's a halogen along with it so we say the halogen has substituted one of the hydrogen atoms so we can call chlorine here a substituent and because of that this compound has different properties than an alkane does this compound will have reactions where you must realize that because of carbon chlorine for example this bond is polar so it'll have different reactions and we'll obviously study them in their own functional groups chemistry and the class of compounds we'll study reactions for all of these guys separately today's class and today's video is all about trying to understand the basics where all this fits in so the words that you've heard the functional group that you heard often all put together so we'll go through about six seven classes the first one's an alkane and that's what it looks like halogen alkanes the functional groups are cx because x could be chlorine bromine or iodine but those two bonded together is what would make something a halogen alkane hence that's the functional group and here's an example not 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 the only example but an example of what a chloroalkane could look like moving on to two other functional groups you've definitely seen at the o levels these are alkanes and alkenes these class of compounds alkanes and alkenes well let's talk about an alkene first so the alkene the functional group is a carbon carbon double bond that's key a carbon carbon double bond implies it's an alkene it has to be a hydrocarbon which means that all the other atoms are carbons and hydrogens but somewhere in between there's a carbon carbon double bond just for references sake i'm using only four carbon compounds so you can compare them all the previous two examples were four carbon alkene and haloalkene this is a four carbon alkene this is not the only four carbon alkene obviously this is just one of them the other kinds we'll study in isomers so but this is an alkene because it has a carbon carbon double bond so the functional group is a carbon carbon double bond and the class of compounds is an alkene now in, in the exam when they ask you to name the functional group the name of this functional group is an alkene and the atoms are carbon carbon double bonded then the next functional group or the next class of compounds that we study in O levels also is an alcohol. What do alcohols have? They have an OH on any of the carbon atoms. They can be one OH or multiple OHs, by the way. It doesn't have to be only one. But here, is, we, since we're only dealing with the most simplest ones, here is the one with one OH. A four carbon alcohol. We'll name them later, don't worry. But this is a four carbon alcohol. And so the functional group here is the OH group. So the OH group is the functional group, but when you have to name the functional group in the exam, make sure you call this the alcohol functional group. Then, introducing you to two new functional groups. They are completely new in A-levels. You've never done them before in O-levels. These guys are called aldehyde and ketone. They're very similar because they both have what we call a carbonyl carbon. A carbonyl carbon is a carbon with a double bonded O attached to it. That's a carbonyl carbon. The same carbon that you would definitely have seen in a carboxylic acid, that same carbon oxygen. The, the difference is that in a carboxylic acid, you got an OH here. In these guys, they don't. What they do have is other atoms attached to them. The, the similarity is that both of them have a carbon oxygen double bond, a carbon oxygen double bond. The difference is that the carbon the, or the carbonyl carbon in aldehydes will be bonded to an H. And in ketone, there will be no H on the carbon with a double bond. They would have to be bonded to two other carbon atoms. So here are two four carbon aldehyde and ketone. This one is a four carbon aldehyde. And you will realize for an aldehyde to have an H, it'll, and it'll happen at the end or the start of the molecule. It'll never be in the middle somewhere. Obviously, when we do this aldehyde, you'll get to understand it more. But basically, if you want to identify what's an aldehyde, you look at the molecule and see if the ends have a C double bond O and an H. Now, we don't call it COH in English or verbally when we're speaking. We call this group a CHO group. But the C, because COH would confuse this with alcohols. So we don't say COH. It's a CHO group. And it's called an aldehyde. So C double bond O with an H is called an aldehyde. But a C double bond O anywhere else in the molecule, not at the ends, is called a ketone. Because if it was the, at the end, then the next atom would be an H, would make it an aldehyde. But if it's somewhere in between, then the C double bond O will, bond, will be bonded to a carbon on one side and, a, and another carbon on the other side. And since this carbon has double bonds, it can have a double bond and two single bonds only. A double bond and two single bonds only. So this is the next class of compounds. Now obviously, I'll talk about their names and what their names end with and all that stuff in, an, in, a, in a little bit. Right now I'm introducing you to the 
class of organic compounds. You got so far alkanes and halogenoalkanes, alkenes and alcohols, and now aldehydes and ketones. Both of aldehydes and ketones have a carbonyl carbon, and collectively sometimes they're called carbonyl compounds. Why carbonyl compounds? Why are they called carbonyl or compounds? Obviously, because this carbon is your, it's called a carbonyl carbon. And so it's easier to uh, refer to it in English when we're speaking verbally that a C double bond O is called a carbonyl carbon. A C double bonded to an O is called a carbonyl carbon. Aldehydes and ketones both have that. The difference is that the aldehydes have an H while the ketones have a C on either side. Now, by the way, the reason why they're named differently is because the reactions are quite different. Yes, there are some similarities, but there are many reactions that an aldehyde undergoes that a ketone does not, just because of the extra H on the carbon that has the O. And it's this H that has certain reactions for aldehydes that we have to think about and work on later. And the last two functional groups for the AS exam are also done in O levels. They are the carboxylic acid and esters. A carboxylic acid has C double bond OH. C double bond O, the carbonyl carbon bonded to an OH. While an ester is also a carbonyl carbon bonded to just simply an O, and then that O to a C, not to an H. And we've done this in O levels that carboxylic acids are the ones that make esters. So esters are derived from carboxylic acids. We understand that, but they are two different functional groups. So the carbonyl, carboxylic acid is one where there's an OH group, which is the same as an alcohol group, on the same carbon as a carbonyl carbon. So you could think of it effectively as an alcohol and a carbonyl carbon together. But because they're together, it has completely different properties as an aldehyde or a ketone or an, acid or an alcohol word, which is why we give it a new name, a new class of compounds, acids. And the reason why they're called acids is because when this guy is mixed in water, it does, does give us H plus ions. So anything that gives us H plus ions in water is also called an acid. So this is a carboxylic acid. Has a carbol, carbonyl uh, group, has a hydroxyl group, and is an acid. So the name is carboxylic acid. Four carbons, and also just like aldehydes, these are found at the terminal carbon atoms. Now that is a new term right now I'm using, terminal carbon atoms. So we'll be using this term to refer to any carbon at the ends of the chain. So this is the chain, these are the guys in the middle, but the leftmost one or the rightmost one would be called terminal carbon atoms. And carboxylic acids will only be found on terminal carbon atoms. That's the thing. Well, on the other hand, esters are found somewhere in between because esters are made when two organic molecules combine together. And esters result in and their formations are from condensation reactions. So esters, we look at all the way at the end, they have a C double bond O group. We do it way at the end of the whole syllabus. And they are formed from acids, but they don't have an H on the C double bonded to an O and the other O. The other O has, doesn't have an H anymore. And that's called the ester group. All right. So now moving on, we'll be looking at now how to represent organic compounds. Now here in front of you are uh, the most basic way, but the most uh, cumbersome way of drawing organic molecules. This is how you would draw them in O levels, where every single atom and every single bond is shown. Now, it is probably the easiest to draw, but it also is the most cumbersome. Imagine drawing this guy. It's going to take some time to draw this. Now, there are other ways of representing these. Now, first of all, this particular way is called the displayed formula in the A-level syllabus. It is also known as the displayed structural formula, but we will call this the displayed formula of organic molecules, where every single bond is shown. Even the OH, if you notice, I have not made the OH together. I have separated the O and the H to show the single bond. Every single bond is shown. The second kind of structural formula is called condensed structural formula. Now these are displayed formulae and each of these can have a condensed formula also. And that is basically a condensed version of writing all the atoms while assuming bonds are single. While if there's a double bond, you show the carbon-carbon double bond. For example, the way this can be written in a much more concise manner is look at the first carbon. How many hydrogens does it have? Three. This one has two oxygens and an H. So an easy way of drawing this would be CH3, CO2H. Now this is called its structural, uh, condensed structural formula for ethanoic acid. 
we look at many more examples systematically so it becomes easier we start from alkenes haloalkenes alkenes will build it up but i'm just introducing you to the idea that these guys are structural formula this is displayed formula and what you see here is what the kindle syllabus calls structural formula but it's really condensed structural formula and that tells you the name condensed it's a much more shorter version of writing the molecule now here if you think about it look at this molecule this molecule has got 1 2 3 4 5 in a carbon chain the second guy has a ch3 here and a ch3 here and the fourth guy has a ch3 one way of writing this would be a ch3 bonded to a c with two ch3s so you'd see some people write this as ch3 uh sorry ch3 bonded to a c without the any bond shown which has two ch3 groups those ones you put in brackets because those are the branches or the substituents and then the second and the next third c has two h's two h's then a ch on this one which has a ch3 as a branch and then a ch3 in the main chain so some people might be contempted to write this as ch3 as a branch and then a ch3 in the main chain now this is still not the most efficient way of drawing this this is, will not be the most efficient structural formula of this the most efficient would be to understand that this CH3 might be on the main chain, while these two CH3s might be looking like substituents. But what we realize is that all the three CH3s are identical because they're bonded to the same carbon atom. So when we draw this, what literally, and I'll just write the name here to separate from, actually no, I'll write it right here. So what we see is this carbon has three CH3s. So the easiest way to draw it is three CH3s on a carbon. 3 CH3s on a carbon, that carbon is bonded to a CH2, so let's that, that CH2 down now, that CH2 comes here now. Then, then another carbon that is a CH, but is bonded to two CH3s, one here and one here. So, then we write it as CH, and then two CH3s. Now here, we do not differentiate between the CH3s that are branched, or on the part of the main center chain. But this would be the most efficient way of writing this down. And we call these st the structural formulae of the compounds. Now, we look at more and we, like I said, we build up. But this is the so two things we saw today uh, in this so far. Uh, two ways of drawing organic molecules. One is called displayed formula, and one is called structural formula. Displayed is showing all the bonds. Structured is just writing all the atoms in a particular fashion. And the branches are generally in, in brackets. Then a third way is what we know as stereochemical formula now if you ignore this for now this is stereochemical formula we actually only draw this when we're drawing some uh, form of isomerism called optical isomerism again that'll be in the video after the next one but what we're showing here is that if you notice these are drawn in terms of its shape carbon having four bonds tetrahedral carbon having four bonds tetrahedral carbon having three bonds trigonal planar oxygen having two bonds and two lone pairs bent ethanol is ch3 with another H, with another bond, so that's because, let me draw ethanol actually. So in O levels, you draw ethanol like this, CH3 bonded to a CH2 and OH. What am I doing? It's drawn right there. Sorry guys. So it's drawn right here. So CH3 tetrahedral, drawn like that. Then another C tetrahedral, drawn like a tetrahedral. And the OH is bent because it has two lone pairs. So this will be keeping this shape in mind. And this it's good to imagine what the molecules look like because they're all jutting out and in with the bonds and everything. But what we really want to focus on is the next form of um, showing organic formulae. And that's called a skeletal formula. Skeletal formula, standing for the skeleton chain of the compound. Now, look at ethanol. Let's, let's focus on this fire. This guy, same thing here. Now, how do I write skeletal formula? It's basically representing all the carbon atoms as nodes, these circles. No hydrogen are shown at all except for the ones bonded to a functional group. Like in this functional group, that will be the OH. Now, how does it work out? What it does is you need to understand that, that the carbons are in this particular form. You see that? Zigzag pattern because they are tetrahedrally bonded. So, each node represents a carbon in the tetrahedral layout. And that's why it looks like bent because the reason why is that this carbon has three other hydrogens. And we don't draw them. Because once I've shown one bond, it's assumed that this node has three other hydrogens. And this node has two hydrogens because this node has shown two bonds. And then the OH. And generally, we don't even write it like this. We literally write it like this. OH. Carbon, carbon, 
OH. This carbon has only one bond shown, so it must have three other hydrogens because all carbons' ke valency has to be four. This carbon has shown two bonds, so it must have two other hydrogens, CH2. Bonded to an OH. So this will be the most, and now why do we do skeletal formulae? Because it is the fastest way of drawing the, shape, uh, the structure of an organic compound. The fastest. It's the laziest, fastest way. And when we start doing organic chemistry and do a lot of molecules, who really wants to draw all the bonds and the structures? So let's look at some more examples. Now here is ethanoic acid, the guy we saw earlier. Now this was CH3CO2H. Now how would I draw this in the skeletal form? Node, node, OOH shown. Node for the CH3. No H is shown. That's the best part. The other carbon also just a node. No H is shown. But its bonds with O are shown. And its bonds with OH are shown because that's the functional group. That's how you draw ethanoic acid. Again, I'm just introducing you to the idea of this formula. We'll be breaking them down molecule by molecule to show you how to draw skeletal formula. So this video is actually just now going to be about how to draw these guys. And it might seem slow and long, but please, if you really want to understand how to draw them, you'll keep up with me. Now here is the same fellow we saw. You know, remember the really big guy, five in the same chain, then two branch here, branch here, branch here, really painful. What I do is realize is that because I have five in the main chain, these are all tetrahedral, so this is where the five stand. One, two, three, four, five. And the second one has a carbon on top, tetrahedrally bonded, and a carbon sticking out of the board, this one, tetrahedrally bonded. So that's how you show a node with four bonds with carbon atoms. Again, if this had hydrogen, we wouldn't show it. But this has four carbon atoms, so we showed all four of them. Then we had this carbon with two H's and two bonds. So this is that carbon with two bonds and two other H's not shown. Then the second last carbon has a CH here and a CH3 here. Second last carbon having a CH3 here and a CH3 here. And that's how we'll draw these guys. Uh, a very simple one, a four carbon alcohol. Let's look at this one. This is, a, now let's look at this. Four carbon, right? One, two, three, four. So now the result would be like this. Now how do I do that result? This is what, follow my uh, line drawn here. Okay, so one, two, three, four. They have to be zigzag because they represent tetrahedral. Second, no H is nowhere shown. So this is one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon. One, two, three, four. Now, the second one has an OH. First, second. Second one has an OH. So I'm going to draw an OH here. And that's all I do. Stick, OH. Now, you do not have to go up with the first bond and then down and up. You would have started with down, up, down. One carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon. But now the second has an OH. So one has an OH, two. This guy has an OH. Now instead of drawing it on top, you follow the triangle in the direction. So you go down and you bring OH here. They don't, there's no difference between this structure and that. They're identical. They imagine this being reflected on the horizontal axis. You'd get this. So that's how we drew, we drew, we put in alcohols as OHS, right? Now another functional group that we've seen, alkenes. Think about these guys. Let me zoom in here. This is an alkene with three carbons. You see one, two, and three, double bond. Three carbons. One, two, three. But the first and the second have a double bond, so there's a second stick. If this was an alkene, if this was a three, literally a three carbon alkene, which would have been propane, you do three carbons, you'll make all the bonds like this, blah, 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 blah. And then you do this. And that would be a three carbon alkene, which is a three carbon alkene. As easy as that. Now, in the condensed formula that we've done so far, if you were interested in that, this would be actually, uh, the first one would be CH3, CH2, CH3. And we'll see them right now. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to start looking at some more structures in more detail. But this is the displayed formulae, the structure formulae, and the skeletal formulae. This is propane, three carbons, alkene. Three carbon alkene, propene, skeletal, and CH2, double bond, CH, CH3. The carbon count double bond is shown because if you don't show it, it's assumed single bond. So when it's not single, you do show it. All right, so scrolling down, I'll show you a table, and then we'll draw all these molecules together. Now this table only has alkanes. Why? Because that's where we start off from. The most simplest class of organic compounds is alkanes. So what we'll do is we start off with them. This is their displayed formula, which means all the bonds are shown. Then we'll come up with the structural formula together and the skeletal formula. Now if you want to try them out yourself first, this is where you pause the video. Try them out because I'm going to start drawing these guys now. One by one. 
one for this, then this, then this. So let's talk about how this molecule's structure form in its cradle can be formed. Very simply, it's got three carbons, one, two, three shown here, all three are single bonds. So the first one is CH3 group, the second is CH2, the third is CH3. And that's literally what you write. CH3 group, then CH2, and then CH3. So let's draw this now. So how do I draw the skeletal formula for this? So there are only three carbons. So literally, I just do one, two, and three. That's it. One, two, and three. Now for the four carbon. That's the butane. Now what do we have? One, two, three, four. So the first one is CH3, then CH2, then CH2, then CH3. So we write it like that also. CH3, CH2, CH2, and then CH3. CH3, then CH2, then CH2, then CH3. And the skeletal for this would have one, two, three, four, four nodes, all single bonds, all hydrogens, nothing else to show for. So literally, it just be this. Uh, one, two, three, four. One carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon. That's exactly how I'd make it. Now the next one is two methyl butane. Now, this is branch. We'll talk about the name, how we got the name later. Don't worry about it. Look at the structure. All I'm caring about is how the structure can be made into a structural formula and a skeletal formula. Now, here, I got one, two, three, four in this chain and a branch of a CH3 on top. So, first, I make the phone in a chain. Now, when I make this condensed structural formula, I realize I can add this as CH3, then a CH, also having a CH3. Then I realize, wait, this carbon has a CH3 here and a CH3 here. So what I should do is combine these two because they're both on this carbon. Even if this one is branched, it doesn't matter. So, yes, one way would be to say that, okay, what I'll do is I'll write the first CH3 and then write the second CH and then put the CH3 as a branch. And if I do that, then I got the other two as CH2 and CH3. Now the problem with that is that it's not as efficient as assuming that, I'm not assuming, sorry, as considering that this CH3 and this are identical, and they are. So I'd write even less if I were to take the two CH3s being identical and they're being on, they're two CH3s, on a carbon that has a CH. Basically, these two CH3s are on this carbon, so they can be clubbed together. So I got the CH, and then the remaining of the molecule, which is another CH2 and a CH3. And this would be the most efficient structural formula of the compound on the left, right here. All right. Now, going on to its skeletal formula. Now, how does one make the skeletal formula? Now, you got one, two, three, four in one chain, so you deal with those four first. We have the same here, do this, same thing, four in the main chain, four here also, four in the main chain, four. So the difference was that this one had one extra carbon than this, we put another thing. Now doing these two, everything else is the same, how do you put the extra CH3? So here you first make the four like this, and then you put the extra. So what I'm saying is, make the four in the main chain like this, and then the f extra branch is on this node right here, so you draw it like that. So this is one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, four carbon, four in the main chain, and this one is your branch. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna show you how to draw some basic skeletal formulae for some of the functional groups that we've studied, so we've seen so, so far. So I'm gonna pull that up right now. Right here, here are some of the functional groups. So some of the uh, group class of compounds, now, this is their names. These are three carbon compounds. You probably have seen them before. Propane, propene, propanol. We'll talk about the two later. And this is propanol, the aldehyde. <clears throat> what I'm more concerned with is the displayed formula, corresponding structural formula, and skeletal formula. So three carbon, CH3, CH3, CH2, CH3. We just drew this one like that. But a three carbon alkene would be CH3, then a CH double bond, CH2. CH3, CH double bond, CH2. And the three in the main chain will be just drawn like this, one, two, three. And then one of the bonds is double bond, so you show it like that. Now, in a three carbon, forget the name. Look at the three, because we'll be, doing, we'll be doing the names in the next video. Look at this molecule. Three carbons in the chain, 
and one OH group. The first one is CH3, then CH, the branch is OH, multiple atoms, and then CH3. So the first is CH3, then the CH, then your branch OH, and then CH3. So three in the main chain, one, two, three, and the middle one has the OH. Most efficient way of drawing this, as you can clearly see. Now, the new functional group, never seen before in A-levels, I mean, on O-levels, you've seen them now in A-levels, aldehyde. This is the carbonyl carbon, the serial bond O, on the last carbon, terminal, hence an EH. So you've got three carbons, and the last one, or the first one, is a double bonded O. So you write this as CH3, CH2, and this group is written as CHO. All right? And if you want to make these three, one, two, three again, see the three is common to all. The three, base, base with a double bond, base with the second carbon having the OH, base with the rightmost having a double bonded O. You can draw that downwards along with that, or go along with the zigzag pattern again if you want. Either or is fine. Okay, so this way, so three carbons and then that. Now I'll show you more, the three carbon ketone and the three carbon acid also. This is what we have for that. So three carbon ketone, one, two, three carbons, the ketone, three carbons, again, three carbons. The middle has an O and the structural formula would be CH3, then CO. Now we don't write the double bond here because CO will always be a double bond. There's no need. Unless there's an H after the O, it'll be a double bond. So when we see that, we know it's a C double bonded O. So we don't have to write that. CH3, CO, CH3. CH3, now this is an acid. CH3, CH2, CO2H. In O levels, you might write this as COOH. In A levels, we combine the O's together to write O2. So this is CH3, CH2, CO2H. That's the structural formula. And this is skeletal. Three carbons, three carbons. Then the last one has a double bond O and the OH. Now, we'll be looking at a lot of these examples later, more. And the earlier earlier past papers would actually not have skeletal formula in their exams, quest papers, because this is a new introduction to the syllabus. A lot of them, especially in MCQs, don't tend to draw large molecules like this. They'll give you the structural formula. So your job will be have to even be able to read them backwards. Like, what does this represent? Oh, a carbon with three H's bonded to a carbon with two H's bonded to an aldehyde group. This would be a carbon with three H's, carbon with two H's, and bonded to an acid group. So you'll have to be able to read that. And especially when they give you lines only to write answers in, this is what you can fit in one line. If they give you space, empty space, you can fit this in. Sometimes they specify, draw the displayed formula, hence you'll have to draw something like this. Sometimes they say, draw the structural formula, they, they ask you to draw like this. Sometimes they say, draw the skeletal formula, you have to draw like this. And sometimes they'll say, just give us structures. Now when it says, just give structures, you can do a mix and match of both. Like I tend to do, instead of writing it like this, I'll say CH3 bonded to C double bond O, bonded to CH3, meaning, I might draw this molecule, uh, maybe if I get some space right here, no, actually right here, I'll draw it right there. I do it like CH3, bonded to C double bond O, bonded to C double bond, CH3. This is an easy of drawing this, not having to worry about, oh, am I drawing the right structure formula? I can write whatever bonds I want to show, but I can group, group uh, alkyl groups or these guys together as CH3, CO, CH3s. It helps, all right? Okay, so let's go over some examples now. 